Spontaneity. In this video, we'll be looking at spontaneous and non-spontaneous chemical reactions. A spontaneous process is a process that once started occurs without having to add extra energy, apart from the initial activation energy. So we can use the analogy of rolling a boulder down a hill to illustrate the difference between a spontaneous and a non-spontaneous process. So as we know from our everyday life experience that boulders tend to roll downhill. And this boulder, if the man lets it go, it'll just roll down of its own accord to the bottom because of gravity. So that's a spontaneous process. Here's an example of a spontaneous process once it gets started. So the man is giving the boulder a little push and when it gets to the edge, gravity will do the rest and it'll roll down to the bottom of the hill. So this is a spontaneous process once started. And we can compare this to a combustion reaction. Once you supply that initial spark, then the, the reaction will continue by itself. And then finally, a non-spontaneous process. So again, we know from our everyday experience that boulders do not spontaneously roll uphill. If you were to get this boulder to the top of the hill, you'd have to put in a consistent amount of energy all the way up to the top. So that's basically a non-spontaneous process. So here we have some examples of some spontaneous chemical reactions. In the left picture here, we have gas burning in a Bunsen burner, and that's combustion. So combustion is a fast, spontaneous process. On the right here, we have rusting. Rusting is a slow, spontaneous process. So even though combustion is fast and rusting is very slow, they are both spontaneous processes. And once you've put in the energy to get them started, then they'll continue without having to add any extra energy. Next, we look at Gibbs free energy, which is delta G. So Gibbs free energy is the energy associated with a chemical reaction that can be used to do work. Delta G can be calculated for reaction and the spontaneity of the reaction can be determined. Delta G must be negative for a spontaneous process. Now there's two equations we can use to measure delta G. At 298K under standard conditions, we can use this equation here. So it's the change in Gibbs free energy equals the sum of the Gibbs free energy of formation of the products minus the sum of the Gibbs free energy of formation of the reactants. And at any temperature, we can use this equation here. So delta G equals the change in enthalpy minus the product of the temperature in Kelvin multiplied by the change in entropy. So let's have a go at calculating delta G, the change in Gibbs free energy. And we'll do it first uh, calculating delta G at 298K. So we're going to use this reaction here. Now, where can we find these change in Gibbs free energy of formation values? We can find them in table 11 of the data booklet. Here they are in this column here. And Gibbs free energy of formation of elements is zero. So we'll measure the change in Gibbs free energy for this reaction here. And then we can determine if it's a spontaneous or a non-spontaneous reaction. So I'm using these values here. This is the compound and this is the change in Gibbs free energy of formation in kilojoules per mole. So when I input the values, aluminium and iron, they are elements. So the delta G formation of elements is zero. And we have iron oxide, which is negative 742 kilojoules per mole and aluminium oxide, which is negative 1582 kilojoules per mole. So I'm going to put these into the equation here and I end up with negative 840 kilojoules per mole. So that's the change in Gibbs free energy at 298K. And because delta G is negative, if you remember for a spontaneous process, delta G must be negative and this value here is negative. Therefore, this is a spontaneous reaction under standard conditions and temperature of 298K. So in the next example, we'll calculate the change in Gibbs free energy of this reaction here. It's calcium carbonate decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas at 500 K. So we need to use this equation here because we are not dealing with standard conditions. So delta G equals the change in enthalpy minus the product of the temperature in Kelvin 
times the change in entropy. So the first thing I need to do is calculate the change in enthalpy for this reaction. And I'm going to use the enthalpy change of formation values from this column in the table here. So to save time, I've done the calculation and the, the change in enthalpy for this reaction is positive 178 kilojoules per mole. So that shows it's an endothermic reaction. So next I need to calculate the change in entropy and I'm going to use this equation here and the values from this column of the table. So to save time I've calculated the change in entropy and it's positive 160.8 joules per Kelvin mole. So next I'll use this equation here to calculate the change in Gibbs free energy for the reaction. Now one thing you have to be careful of is the units. For enthalpy, for the change in enthalpy, the units are kilojoules per mole. For the change in entropy, it's joules per Kelvin mole. So I have to divide my value for the change in entropy by a thousand to get it into kilojoules. So it's something that you have to be careful of when using this equation. So I put in positive 178, that's the change in enthalpy, minus 500, that's the temperature in Kelvin, multiplied by the change in entropy in kilojoules, and the value I get is positive 97.6 kilojoules per mole. So this is a positive value for delta G. Remember, for a spontaneous reaction, delta G must be negative, but in our case here, it's positive, so the reaction is non-spontaneous at 500 K. So the final question we can ask is, at what temperature will the reaction be spontaneous? So we know that for a spontaneous process, delta G must be negative, or delta G must be less than zero. So here's how to calculate that temperature at which the reaction will be spontaneous. So you take the T times the change in entropy, and you switch it to the other side of the equal sign, which is what I've done here. So you're left with temperature times the change in entropy equals the change in enthalpy. Now I want to get T by itself, so I divide both sides by the change in entropy, which is 0 0.1608, and on this side it cancels out, and I'm left with T equals 1107K. So at what temperature will the reaction be spontaneous? It's the temperature of 1,107 K or above.